Hey everyone, welcome to part two of How Obesity Weighs Down Immunity, where my goal is to help you understand how being obese affects your immune system. In the last video, I discussed the relationship between obesity and worse infectious outcomes, as well as the fundamentals of our immune system military. In this video, I'm going to discuss the reasons why being obese wrecks your immune system. Fundamentally, it comes down to the metabolic and hormonal changes that occur alongside carrying around too much fat. Now, there are numerous metabolic and hormonal changes that occur with obesity, and they are all likely to play a role in one way or another. However, two changes that stand out above all others are chronic low-grade inflammation and leptin resistance. At the top of our list is the inflammatory changes that often accompany obesity. In most people who are obese, lipid-overloaded fat cells stimulate innate immune defenses that secrete inflammatory signaling molecules into circulation, creating a state of chronic, low-grade inflammation throughout the body. While tempting to believe that a state of heightened immune activity would improve our defense against infections, it actually has the opposite effect. Much like a financial budget for a military, our body has limits on its ability to create and properly train immune cells, leading to a deterioration of immune function over time, something called immunosenescence. Infantry soldiers become weaker and move more slowly. Our security force isn't as good at identifying and killing infected cells. Intelligence officers are worse at obtaining intel about the enemy. More field officers are retired and incapable of responding to an attack. The special forces lose much of their lethality. And our generals have difficulty targeting novel enemies that we haven't faced previously. All of these are characteristics of immunosenescence. Although immunosenescence occurs naturally as we age, this isn't due to an intrinsic property of aging. Rather, it's explained by an imbalance between inflammatory and anti-inflammatory signaling that results in a state of chronic low-grade inflammation some researchers have termed inflammaging. That same chronic low-grade inflammation that causes immunosenescence is present in most people who are obese as well. The similarities between immune function and obesity and aging are ultimately what led Monica de la Fuente from the University of Madrid to propose that obesity is a model of premature immunosenescence. She later went on to support this proposition by showing that young obese mice have similarly impaired immune function as normal weight mice more than twice their age. If De La Fuente's findings translate to humans, it would be equivalent to an obese 21-year-old having the immune system of a normal weight 55-year-old. And preliminary data in humans suggests this to be the case. There are few differences in the immune function of younger and older obese adults, suggesting that obesity does indeed cause premature immunosenescence. Moreover, Incubating healthy immune cells with the plasma of obese adults causes them to dysfunction and display characteristics of immunosenescence. To add insult to injury, immunosenescence and chronic low-grade inflammation exist in a vicious cycle with one another. During immunosenescence, the adaptive immune system takes the biggest hit, which serves only to cause a compensatory increase in the innate inflammatory response. In other words, the failing adaptive immune system causes more chronic low-grade inflammation in the body that caused it to fail in the first place. Aside from promoting immunosenescence, chronic low-grade inflammation may also lead to the development of tolerance against inflammatory signals that would alert the immune system to an infection. Basically, it takes a stronger initial inflammatory response to infection to get the attention of immune cells, meaning there is a delay in the containment of pathogens that invade the body, which gives them a larger window of opportunity to spread or do damage. By the way, 
If you're tired of always fighting a cold, taking sick days, and feeling worn out from chronic infections, then your best bet is to grab our fat loss blueprint. Go check it out at theenergyblueprint.com forward slash fat loss blueprint. The second primary way that obesity reduces immune function is through promoting a state of leptin resistance. For the longest time, our fat cells were thought of as just a reservoir of energy for use at later times. And many people today still hold this view that fat cells are nothing more than storage organs to store the excess energy from food. Nothing more, nothing less. It wasn't until 1994 that researchers found definitive proof that fat cells were so much more than just a place of energy storage. It was in 1994 that Jeffrey Friedman of Rockefeller University discovered leptin, a hormone that is secreted by fat cells that plays a central role in appetite regulation through reducing hunger and increasing satiety. While best known for its role in appetite regulation and the control of body weight, leptin also has diverse effects on the immune system. Nearly every immune cell has leptin receptors, and leptin binding increases immune cell survival and ability to fight off invading pathogens. Leptin is basically a pro-inflammatory molecule. The amount of leptin we have circulating throughout the body is directly proportional to the amount of fat mass we are carrying around, meaning that the more obese you are, the more leptin you have. However, this doesn't mean that there is greater leptin signaling in the obese body. Quite the contrary, actually. Obesity is associated with a state of cellular leptin resistance. This is why injecting leptin into folks with obesity causes little to no weight loss. The chronically elevated leptin levels caused their body to downregulate the expression of leptin receptors, so there wasn't any way for the increased leptin levels to have an effect. We see the same type of resistance in immune cells. When mice are fed a fattening diet that has them become obese, their T cell field officers and natural killer cell security forces don't function properly due to a reduction of leptin signaling. In this way, obesity mimics the immunocompromised state seen in malnourishment. So, to sum up everything that we've talked about in this presentation, the risk and severity of infections exists on a U-shaped curve with body weight, where being malnourished and overnourished are risk factors. Obesity increases not just the risk of severe complications when you become sick, but also the risk of dying. To be immunocompromised is to have an immune system incapable of working at full capacity. You'll get sick more often, stay sick longer, and be more vulnerable to different types of infections. Given everything we have discussed so far, it's fair to say that if you are obese, you are immunocompromised. Virtually every aspect of innate and adaptive immunity is impaired with obesity. Because obesity often coexists with a state of chronic, low-grade inflammation, infected cells are slower to release help signals that draw attention to the infection. As a result of delayed help signals, the innate immune system is less capable of containing the infection before it spreads, meaning more cells become infected. The delayed innate immune response is compounded by impaired functionality of innate immune cells like natural killer cells, macrophages, and dendritic cells. The impaired functionality of macrophages and dendritic cells means that T cells don't receive enemy intel in a timely manner, delaying the adaptive immune attack. When the adaptive immune system finally gets going, the helper T cells are excessively inflammatory, the cytotoxic T cells are inefficient, and the B cells do not produce as many antibodies against the invading pathogen. If the infection is overcome, less memory T and B cells are formed, meaning that there is increased susceptibility to future infections by this specific enemy, and there is an impaired ability to clean up damaged cells and repair any damaged tissue. Overall, being obese is a significant risk factor for severe infections. And weight loss is one of the best ways to boost your immune functionality if you are overweight or obese.
If you're serious about losing fat in the most efficient and healthiest way possible, then join our online program where we'll show you how to make the dieting process second nature, lose fat, and keep the fat off in the long run. In this program, we'll take you through 18 of the most powerful science-backed strategies in existence for regaining and retaining that youthful body. We cover everything from fat loss fundamentals like getting enough protein, to optimizing sleep and stress reduction, to using supplements that actually work, all in the name of fat loss. So if you've been struggling with your weight or you want to push the boundaries of leanness, then you simply must join our fat loss blueprint.